Hi, everybody. Welcome to the OTOT pod. If you're wondering why two voices aren't here, it's because of Zack Snyder. Blame him. The curse <laughs> of Zack Snyder. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk coming next week. <laughs> <laughs> coming next week. We actually recorded two episodes on Zack Snyder and neither one of them were usable and so uh yeah. here we are so we're gonna so we're gonna do it next week for we- peaky promise Zack snyder's coming next week <laughs> that's right but this week we are going to be talking about you know just since it's kind of a last minute thing since me and alex are kind of big into movies just our favorite movies and like why you know just kind of talking about our top 10 if you will I know mine isn't in like a specific order. I don't know if yours is, but just like our favorite movies and why we like them, what we think about them. So yeah. yeah. No, I I totally agree. Um, Mine certainly are not in any order, but yeah. 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 All right. Let's get started. So um, do you want to go one by one or do you want to say all 10? Um, I think, I feel like we can just like go one by one, just like kind of just list them off. Okay. Um, and I want to make this very clear that these are hastily cobbled together top 10. I'm sure if you ask me tomorrow, <laughs> I will have a completely different top 10. And the day after that will be a completely different yeah. top 10. It's just it, like it is. Movies yeah, are ever changing tough. and my opinions yeah. are changing with it. So, yeah, I feel like mine has been pretty like set in stone for like a while. I feel like like there's definitely like movies I have to watch again where I'm like, this could be in there. But I definitely feel like mine's been pretty like laid out for a long time, and I, I think the thing about my top ten, like it's a lot of my move, a lot of my top ten, they aren't like classics, I guess. They're just like movies that like I really enjoy watching because I, I feel like sometimes those can get confused, like between like the best movies and like what I enjoy, and I, I feel like I focus more on like what I enjoy rather than is it like the definitive best movie ever, you know. Okay, well then, that is something that I do want to clarify then, because I, the way that I've always distinguished it, and I know this is a super pedantic and like doesn't make sense to most people, is I consider um, my favorite movie to be something that like I just really enjoy watching. I understand it is nowhere close to the best film ever produced, and then I also have a list of favorite films, which I think are absolute like perfection. Got you. Okay. Um, And so are we talking about, we're talking about what we personally, like when it comes to movies for me, it's like my favorites are something that if I'm like, oh, I'm in the mood to watch something that I know I'm going to enjoy. And it's not like, oh, um, I want to watch something new. I want to watch something that I know is perfect. It's like, I know it's not perfect, but it's like, oh, this is just a movie that like I can really enjoy watching this. That's what I have in my top 10 favorites. basically how mine is like okay. Okay. structured so yeah all right you want to um, go ahead so do you want me to go first sure yeah so the first movie i have on my list it's a movie that i have loved since i was a little kid i don't know if you've seen it but kung fu hustle i like mm. kung fu hustle is it's like it combines everything that i love about those like kind of like cheesy you know 80s action martial arts movies sure and it's just the fight scenes are amazing the story is awesome yeah kung fu hustle is just like i i think the first time i watched it i had to have been like at least like in elementary school and i was just like blown away because i had seen martial arts movies before right yeah but i never i'd only seen like the super serious like bruce lee kind of enter the dragon type martial art movies i'd never seen something that was like funny <laughs> you know and remind me so, again yeah, who's the star of kung fu hustle um let me look up his name he's like a pretty prominent like action star over there overseas steven chow yeah oh okay yes he also oh, directed sure. something that other people may have seen from him is um Shao. what's it called shaolin soccer i think is what it's called maybe yeah that's what oh, i okay. may have seen from him but yeah kung fu hustle was just like extraordinary like if you haven't seen it it's like a seminal action movie like i have not seen it but i have heard really good things about it yeah it's like yeah it's amazing like it's it's awesome awesome. (laughs) okay it's good um 
I guess I'm gonna go number one. It's cliche, but I love the Batman. I think the Batman is one of the mm-hmm. best movies ever made. I understand it's not perfect. It's not the best film ever made, but movie wise, the most yeah. recent Batman movie that just came out. Yes, uh, the Batman okay, by, okay, uh, okay. 2022, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz. Um, okay. I okay. think it is the perfect movie that encapsulates what Batman is. I think there have been so many films in the past which have had Batman in them and just truly not understood that he is a detective first and a crime fighter second. And I think the Batman is the first movie to get that right. I remember when I was watching the Batman, my initial thought was like, it's long, but it feels like it's long for a reason, you know? Like, I feel like the detective work is really put at the forefront and detect, like, it really puts an emphasis on how much time detective work takes. And, like, sure. I really like how he goes back to, like, the Joker and just all that stuff. Yeah. I really, yeah, it's just, like, overall, like, like it reminded me of, um, I don't know if it was inspired by this story, but The Long Halloween, that's what I think. Like, yes, it was felt. inspired by The Long Halloween, um, and okay, a couple other yeah. Films, a couple other uh, Batman graphic novels as well, but yes, it is. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Just what I'm saying. But then number two on my list is The Dark Knight, which is a complete opposite, but it's still a mm, great movie yeah. <laughs> because it's truly yeah, encapsulates like the idea of the Joker, and I think that's incredible. Yeah. I think Heath Ledger does a fantastic job. Um, I don't think I'm not going to say Nolan can't do any wrong. Nolan can certainly do wrong, but. I think for the Batman series, <laughs> yeah. Noah doesn't do wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you think the third one was good? Dark Knight Rises? Okay. Okay. I know the third one's. Yeah. Um, I think the third one is, it's good. It's definitely the third out of the three in terms of ranking. I would go Dark Knight, <laughs> yeah. then Batman Begins, then Dark Knight Rises. And I think that's pretty popular amongst a lot of people. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. do think that it's good. Okay, okay. I can definitely, like, see, like... Because I, I remember when it came out, like, I know the ending was something that was super divisive or, like... Right. Or just, like... Just, like, right. a lot of it was kind of just, like, you know... Just, like... I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I know a lot of people were conflicted on how to feel about it as a ending to the story. But sure. overall, like, I think it's, like, fine, fine. Sure. No, yeah. I totally agree. All right, what's number two for you? Yeah. Number two for me... And this is like a movie that another movie, well, it came out pretty recently, but I feel like I watched it all the time and I've just seen it like, like when it came out, it just struck me was Midsummer. I really enjoyed Midsummer. It's like probably my favorite horror movie. Midsummer is what, 2018 directed by Ari Aster starring Florence Pugh? Uh, Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like kind of right there in that year. But um, yeah, I feel like I don't know what it is about this movie. I think Florence Pugh just has, like, a very striking performance for how she displays grief and, like, how the movie explores, like, manipulation and all this type of stuff. Like, I just, I, it's just such a interesting film to watch. And then, like, some of the scenes are so shot. Like, have you seen it? Yeah, I have. I have. So, like, when the old couple just, like, straight up jumps off the cliff, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> right, and, right. <laughs> And then, and then especially the being butt naked, <laughs> that was so crazy. Yeah, but yeah. the ending, where the, the, there's just so many striking scenes in this movie, and it all just like, it's just like really good, you know? Like it's just right. like a seminal horror movie, right. you know? Yeah. And I think something that um, Ari Aster does really well with this is uh, staging and blocking for like everything, and you can look into the background and there are so many things that he has set up that come into play later. Um, and it's not like a, 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 I I don't know what else to relate it to other than like a Marvel movie where like in the back, there might be an Easter egg, but like it's mostly there just as background. Everything that is on the screen has a part later in the film. Yeah, that's for true. Like it definitely just feels like everything he's doing is like leading to this ultimate like narrative at this even in something like uh what was before um midsummer mm. why am i forgetting his name i'm oh, forgetting the movie's name ah oh, what was it? it was like with the with the little girl when she gets her head chopped off <laughs> i don't know uh, what you're talking about 
Oh man, I I gotta find it because it's like it's it was right before this one, and um, it was it was also another really good horror movie that I think Hereditary. Yes, Hereditary is like the same deal where it's just like everything's leading to something. I see. Yeah, okay. That that's number two for me. Okay. Okay. Um, I kind of said number two already was The Dark Knight. Uh, should I say my third? Yeah. Okay. My third. Um, sure. Yeah. Um. Let me think. Like, I have them listed, and I don't want to say... Like, these are not in any order. I do want to specify that. I'm just going to say number third is Cherry, yeah. which is, I, if I'm not mistaken, okay, it's 2018 okay. or 2019, directed by the Russo brothers and starring Tom Holland. It's an Apple yeah. TV movie. Yeah. Um, I know it's mm -hmm. extremely divisive because a lot of people think it's a terrible movie. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of writing <laughs> and story and it just all... Um, I think the camera work and the editing and everything is done so well. Yeah. I can see where people don't like it because it does. It, it is a movie basically saying that there is no hope left in the world. And I know that's a tough thing for people to like walk out of the theater and say, wow, that was a great movie. But I think for, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think in terms of what it's trying to say, I think it does a really good job of saying it. Yeah, I have I don't have Apple TV, so I haven't seen it. So I only heard like the kind of like conversation around it without being able to form like my own opinion about it. So that's interesting because like I knew I know it's about he's like a bank robber, correct? He uh, yes, he's a um, uh, kind of like a shy person all through growing up. And then he gets uh, or he ends up yeah. um, enlisting for the military. He comes back. And he uh, just has a massive amount of PTSD and a huge drug problem. And he has to resort okay. to like doing like petty bank, uh, bank thefts in order to like fuel his drug addiction. I, it's not what I was expecting from that. Cause I, I that's not what I was expecting. I just remember seeing the trailer and being a bank robber really wild. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it is really a movie about like loss and drug addiction and PTSD and, it's i think it does a really good job at doing what it sets out to do and tom holland absolutely kills it in that role there are some things where i don't think he does the best job but i think that he does a fantastic job in cherry i see that okay that's something i'll have to check out so for me my third movie and like my little top 10 it's kind of a tie like a slash kind of deal it's like once again this is an order but i just I don't want to leave this other movie out because I'm looking at my list and I'm like, I feel like I can't have this one without other one. But it's originally it was The Handmaiden, which is directed by Park Chan Wook, who has also directed Old Boy, Snowpiercer, um, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, just this like seminal Korean Parasite, director. Right? No, that was Bong Joon Ho, I think. I thought Bong Joon Ho did Snowpiercer. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, I don't remember who did Parrot. Let me see. Yeah, so, why is it giving me the anime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Bong Joon-ho did Parasite. I don't believe he did Parrot. They, they may have been like a co-director type deal. But for, I am currently looking. for Snowpiercer? Yeah, for Snowpiercer, but oh, let me okay. look. I don't want to lie to, to the audience. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, I guess maybe it was like a co-type deal, but either way. Okay. Um, Handmaiden, Old Boy, just like Old Boy, another action, it's not even an action movie, really. Like, it's a it's a movie that has action in it, <laughs> gotcha. but like the hand, I guess, I guess I'll talk about the Handmaiden Is first, because that's like. I, I always thought it was like a horror film. Is it not? The Handmaid? No, it is. It's kind of, it's like, it tricks you into thinking that, but it's not okay. that. It's like this, I don't want to spoil it because it's so good. I'll just say it's this beautiful love story about these two women who are trying to like escape how, escape how like, I think it's like Japanese and Korean like life is trying to force them to be because it takes place in like imperial whenever japan was invading everywhere 
<laughs> it takes okay. place during that. So gotcha. it's just like this beautiful love story of like kind of like trying to defy destiny and like the open like that horror because I thought it was a horror movie too. And there's definitely like it uses those horror elements to try to like make you think the movie is something else when it's not that it actually but it turns into this like expansive story of these two women trying to like escape what has been set for them mostly by like the men around them and it it's just like i saw it for the first time like because i'd heard about it with my freshman year college i was like this sounds interesting this looks like a kind of like funny horror movie but then like i watched i watched it like a year or so ago for the because it was like it was super hard to find so like i finally it was finally on something and i watched it and i was like wow this is just like exceptional this is like this is just a beautiful film there's no other way to describe it. like if, if there's anything from this list that i would recommend people watching i feel like it's this because most people, I feel like, haven't seen it. And it's just so amazing. It won a bunch of awards in Korea, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then Old Boy. Have you seen Old Boy, Alex? I have not. I do know pretty much everything about Old Boy, but I have not seen it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It is... It should, I, this is another movie I saw, like, super young. Like, when I was really starting to learn about movies in high school, I watched this, and I was like, wow. Like, how do you... Because it's based on a comic book, but it's, like, the idea of it, but, like, the movie's so different from the comic book. But, like, how do you even think of that? Like, how do you, like, the ending is just, like, wow. <laughs> I'm just, like, man, this is amazing. This is, like, an awesome film. Sure. And then Spike Lee made a bad version of it. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, The Handmaiden, Old Boy, Park Chan-wook, great director, great guy. Uh, yeah, please watch both of those. I, okay. I would recommend you, you, I think you really like Old Boy Alex, so I'd recommend that. I know, I do, I really want to see it. I just haven't found a streaming service which it's on. Yeah, I feel like it's on Netflix a lot. Like, it's on Net. it'll come on Netflix like, for like a few months and then leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, gotcha. what's, what's next for you? Uh, number four on the list, and once again, not in any order, is The Man from Uncle. Um, I, yes. fantastic, 2015. Um, directed by Guy Ritchie, starring Henry Cavill and uh, Army Hammer and Alicia Vikander. Um, it's such a funny, smart, and uh, really good action film that I, I, I think it's Guy Ritchie's best film. I mean, he does have a lot of really good stuff. I know a lot of people didn't really like The Gentleman, but I like The Gentleman. Um, I mean, King Arthur's not that great. But I think The Man from Uncle is <laughs> <laughs> I think The Man from Uncle is his best film and it's his best cast. And it, uh, it, who if yeah. you have not seen it, I highly recommend you see it. It is a great spy thriller action film. So I I have not seen this movie. We talked about it briefly and you recommended it. You sung its praises. But so like, do you think this would be like because there's talks that, you know, obviously there's talks about Henry Cavill and James Bond. Right. Is it kind of the same type of deal in uh, The Man From Uncle? Or is right. it yeah, like just, so a lot of times in those conversations, um, Henry Cavill is mentioned because of his work in The Man From Uncle, um, because he essentially plays like an okay. American okay. version of James Bond, um, despite Henry Cavill himself being British. But yeah, yeah I, I definitely <laughs> think that if you took Napoleon Solo, which is his character from um, The Man From Uncle, and you dropped him, in a James Bond movie and then called him James Bond and made him British, he would be a perfect casting. Okay. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like interesting. Cause like I, I, I'm not much into the spy genre, which I feel like I need to get more into. Cause I like, I feel like there's not too many good spy movies anymore. I just yeah. feel like the, the spy genre is kind of just like not disappeared. Cause like, I feel like Mission Impossible is still kind of a spy movie, but not really. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, that's so true. Like I'm still looking for like spy movies. Like there, we need more of them. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so for me, my next movie, like I guess the fourth one for me, Logan. Logan okay, is Logan's great. Yeah, easily one of my favorite superhero movies. Um, I this is probably the best exploration of a withering superhero we will ever get i i think it's just phenomenal i think even this story like i know we've kind of talked about adapting comic book stories a little bit and like how to do that and still make it your own in this comic but like it adapts old man logan 
so well, even like even without having like old Hawkeye or Cannibal Hulk, <laughs> it still feels like I'm reading Old Man Logan. And this like this movie, I, I it made me cry because like Wolverine is a character most of us have grown up with, like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And so like this mm-hmm. movie, it was a beautiful end to the character. Everything. I the only thing I wish we could have gotten is um. Liv Schreiber as a saber tooth. Sure. I know they wanted to, but he was just filming something and they couldn't like make yeah. it work. Yeah. But other even having like the younger Wolverine was still like a good way to like still make that kind of right, right. story work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a question uh, for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. What are your opinions on Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine for Deadpool three? I'm so disappointed. I mean, like okay. I know he has said it's like a, it's gonna it's not gonna affect. Um, Logan, but it is because it's another movie, you know, like right. it just inherently is. And it's just like disappointing because like Logan was such a good end. Everything with Laura, everything with like the new mutants, like it was just such a good, it, it showed us who this character is and what Logan represents. And now we're going to get like a Deadpool movie that's basically just like a funny cameo. Look at, look at me killing, you know, the Fantastic Four or Electro or whatever. And it's just like, I think Logan deserves a better ending than that. And this, this movie was that ending, this movie where like we see how much he cares about not just the X-Men, but the future of mutant. Cause Logan's always been displayed as his character is kind of like ambivalent towards it all. And we really get to see him say, no, like I care. Like, I care enough to like really die for this. And now it's just like, He's in Deadpool making jokes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's just no, disappointing. I, yeah. I feel the same way, but I wanted to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. This, yeah, just such a good movie. Like, if, if you haven't seen uh, black and white movies, if you want to watch a good black and white movie, <laughs> watch the black and white Logan movie. It's really good. Or just watch the Justice Grey, Zack Snyder's Justice League, but that's okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, I guess if we're going superhero movies, I think one of my favorite superhero movies is The Suicide Squad, the 2021 version directed by mm-hmm. James Gunn. I definitely admit that there are problems to it, namely the fact that the movie is about characters that, um, the whole shtick is these characters can die at any moment and then none of them die. Um, but, (laughs) but, uh, I do, I do think it's a great film. Otherwise, I think that, um, the pacing's fantastic. I think the humor is some of James Gunn's best, uh, in terms of, um, the the quality of the film itself, in terms of like visuals, I think this is the first time James Gunn really like adapted, um, like fully shooting on red cameras. And I think it is probably the best decision he's made in a long time. Um, uh, it's just a great movie. Are like, what are red cameras specifically? Red Red is a brand of camera. So uh, compared mm, to okay, the okay. Um, uh, looking at like a Da Vinci or not a Da Vinci, looking at like a Black Magic or an Ari, mm, okay, which gotcha. Ari are like thirty thousand dollar cameras, uh, fifty thousand dollar cameras, yeah. and so they are almost primarily like only used for major productions because they're just so expensive versus a red camera um, which red is kind of trying to uh, very similar to what james gunn like puts himself out as and it's they are trying to disrupt that monopoly that ari or black magic have on their like ursa minis or uh, yes um, um okay. or anything of that sort where red comes out and they're like red is pricing cameras closer to like five thousand dollars and they even have like a um a five thousand ten thousand like it's still expensive but it's more affordable for entry or like uh hobbyist filmmakers and so i i really appreciate james gunn's effort to shoot everything since guardians 2 um guardians 2 was a mix of red and re cameras and then Suicide Squad was fully red, and then Guardians 3 is fully red, Peacemaker is fully red. Like, 
everything he's doing, he's using these like $15,000 cameras, $10,000 cameras, which are still so, yeah. expensive, but yeah. a lot more affordable. Not as expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we talked, another question I have. So we kind of talked about James Gunn and his new DC universe briefly. Are you, you say you're excited for his new DC universe or do you think it's like something where like when he's making a specific type of film, you'll enjoy it. But as a whole, like his, you don't want to see like James Gunn vision for the DC universe or are you just like excited in general for it? I am not excited for his vision of the DC universe just because <laughs> um, I, I mean, is coming from the words out of James Gunn's mouth himself. He said he doesn't really care for mainstream characters. He likes the characters that no one else cares for. And I think that if you yeah. want to lead a studio or lead an entire like chapter of superhero films, you got to care about mainstream characters. You can't just have your Suicide Squads and um, Guardians of the Galaxy. You need to authority. put effort in. <laughs> yeah, authority, creature commandos, Swamp Thing. Like, yeah. You can't just care about the uh, little characters. You also have to care about producing. Yeah what the majority of the audience is going to like, and that's going to be your Superman, your Batman, yeah. your Wonder Woman, your Flash. And so I don't know if he yeah. quite has I, um, what it... I don't know if his mentality going into it is yeah. right for a huge studio. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he has a good grasp of, like... Even now, it doesn't seem like... Even with, just with the casting, the, the announced casting for um, the Superman Legacy movie, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like he knows where this is going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but... Um, I'll probably still watch it, you know, but I'm, I definitely wouldn't say I'm looking forward to the James Gunn DC universe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me, this next film, Ocean's Eleven is like, oh, for sure. Wow. Yes. Probably like, I don't know if it's what I, I feel like it's not saying it's not being crazy. Today. It's like the best heist film. Cause right now I'm drawing a blank on any other heist film that I feels like because heist films are hard. I, I feel like sure, yeah. making a heist film where like it doesn't feel like they're superheroes and doesn't feel like their plan is just so crazy that like it's just the plot making it happen. Like making a good heist film is hard. It's why there's I feel like there's not that many good really seminal heist films. But Ocean's Eleven does it, especially and this cast is like insane. George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Andy Garcia. Julia Roberts, oh, yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's just a crazy cast. Um, Bernie Mac also, <laughs> rest in peace, shout out to him. Is is um oh Don Cheadle plays a British dude in this. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you cannot shout forget out to about that. Don Cheadle's Britishness. Yeah, dude, I, I like yeah, just like a really good, just like a fun movie to watch. Like they're just it's just fun. It's just like it's it's so much style, like. Just the way the characters talk, the way it's shot, like everything is just cool. Like I don't know how to describe it besides this movie is just cool. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Right. Okay. Is it is it your your turn? Uh, sure. Um. Yeah. So what's this? I guess number five, or I don't know. I don't know what number we're on. So, um. Would it be? Yeah, I think six. Six. Okay, number six. I'm trying to think. Which one I want to put up? I'm going to say one of my favorite films of, not favorite films, favorite movies of all time is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And I know that seems like it should not be, but I think it is. It movie's awesome. <laughs> I think it is incredibly funny. I think it's incredibly, like, really well put together. When it comes to time travel movies, there are so many films. Yeah that try to attempt time travel and they end up like not making any sense or like changing the rules halfway yeah, through they try bill to be and... too smart about it yeah. right right bill and ted no they said we are going to be super like straightforward on how this works it's going to be consistent throughout the entire yeah. film it's going to play a role um like throughout the film this time travel is like even in the beginning you don't realize that like they have already gone back in time in order to set up that beginning. And so, like, I think it's incredibly smart and probably one of the best uses of time travel in film. Do you Did you like the sequel where they, like, meet they're, death and, they're like, They're bogus journey? Um, 
Yeah, I like Bogus Journey. I do not like Bogus Journey, and I don't like Face the Music either. Wow. Is Face the Music the newest one? Yes. I did not see that one. It's it's not a <laughs> Bill and Ted movie. It's, it's yeah, I don't know how else to say it. Isn't it, like, about their daughters or something? Yeah, it's about something? their daughters, and they, like, retcon a whole bunch of stuff, which is what I was just saying against mm-hmm. the first one being like they don't change their rules but the third yeah. one's like ah oh, just kidding all of the rules are yeah. changed <laughs> yeah but yeah it's um in my perfect world Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is a standalone film there is no sequel <laughs> yeah, um, I mean sorry, I, that I, was, uh, I, I watched that watch Bogus I, Journey hmm? oh yeah I was just saying it's been a while since I watched Bogus Journey but I remember liking it. I remember being like wow this is funny <laughs> Yeah. Um, I just want to say uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is 1989, directed by Stephen Herrick, mm-hmm. starring Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. What do you think about Keanu Reeves as an actor? Because I feel like I feel like he's I think he's great in Point so Break and <laughs> Speed. You think he's good in Point Break? Yeah. I mean, he's not the best in Point Break, but I mean, he's good <laughs> yeah. enough. I, I, mean, I he's think better. That, it's better than Dracula. Oh, I forgot he was Dracula. Yeah, he he was like the he tried to fall in love with Winona Ryder, Dracula, yeah. and he had a weird accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, I think I think John Wick is his best role, where he just doesn't have to say very much. There was some yeah, statistic about John yeah. Wick Four where like he said like less words than there are minutes in the film or something. That's that's awesome. <laughs> Dude, go for Keanu, man. Go for Keanu. <laughs> okay. Do you like the Matrix movies? Um Yeah, I, I like the Matrix movies. I think the first one is probably one of the best movies ever made. Um I think the Wachowskis yeah. uh just absolutely nail it. I think the second and third also in my perfect world they don't exist. Um but yeah. <laughs> Dude, I when I like I kind of like just disconnect the first one from the last two because I'm just like, because w- what even happens <laughs> in like Revolutions and Reloaded? It's just like, I yeah, just crazy journeys with like octopus squid robots. <laughs> oh, there's four Matrix out there now. Oh my. Yeah, the uh, most recent one, which I don't know. I don't know what, what was called. called. I think yeah. I don't know if it was. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I don't feel like we needed a Matrix four. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. It was so yeah. bad. I know Neil Patrick Harris was in it. He played somebody important. <laughs> but that's he didn't, all I know he didn't even play somebody important. Story. He was there for like two oh, scenes. Well. <laughs> he was there for like two scenes and they're like, oh, this guy's uh, super important. And then they kind of forget about him. It's... Oh, uh, well. <laughs> yeah. uh, that anyway, is I don't know. What Matrix do you think of Keanu as an actor? <laughs> as an actor, I think... Oh, man. I think if you're just... It's weird. Because I don't want to say he's bad, because he's definitely been in good movies. Sure. But, like, you can't, like... You're not going to get, like, a clinic from him or anything. You're not not watching, like, De Niro or Pacino when you're watching Keanu, (laughs) you know? You're definitely just, like, kind of just watching the guy, like, kind of just... Not try his best, but, like, just kind of doing it, you know what I'm saying? Which isn't bad, but, yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, so what's uh, number six for you? For me, uh, for number six for me, this is probably like my second favorite movie ever. Um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. This movie... I cannot uh, get into that film. You can't. Oh, uh, I, I love Scott fast. Pilgrim vs. the World. Yeah. No, really. That is true. I do agree. Because it's trying to pack like seven volumes worth of comic books into like an hour and a few minutes or whatever. Yeah. But, um, Edgar oh, Wright's one of my favorite directors. Oh, I love this movie just because it is like, like, well, I love that it's fast paced. It feels like everything is just like, it's so fast, but everything feels so intentional. And Edgar Wright is just so creative. I love, I love watching his movie. I have another one of his movies, actually my next movie, but Edgar Wright is just a wonderful director. And I feel like this movie, Michael Sarah is like, dude, I don't know how to describe this movie. Like, I watch it. It just makes me feel good. Okay. 
like what it's saying about love and like being better and just like kind of just like redemption overall it, it appeals to me you know i think it like it has this like overcoat of just being this kind of like funny video game movie but right. i think once you take off that coat there's like a, just a real story about how like falling in love can hurt and how you shouldn't let that hurt stop you from trying to like be better or move on or just like become something else you know and i really like that you know because as you've seen in my scripts like all i talk about is like falling in love <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah, yeah. but no, i get that yeah. i get that um it's just yeah uh, i really do wish that i could like it i just don't like when movies are too fast and one of like the biggest disappointments to me was the most recent Great Gatsby with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, because mm, uh, great, yeah. the Great Gatsby is probably my favorite book. I absolutely okay. love that book, and I really wanted the movie to be good. But when you're trying to fit however yeah. many pages, 300 pages into a film, everything yeah. moves too fast, and it's just yeah. you don't get enough time to yeah, like, really savor it like you do when you read it. Yeah. You might like the comic book uh, for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World because obviously, like, because it's like not sure. trying to like get over and done, it might be like a little bit easier to digest. There is more story though because a lot of a lot of stuff did get cut out for the movie, but it's still like the good right. comic book to read. Yeah, you know, it's okay. still kind of like going over the same yeah, themes. Yeah. And stuff. I'll definitely look yeah. for it. Yeah, I I usually just get like the big, the big like volumes. There's like three big ones that pretty much have all of it in there, so that's how I have it. But yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Well, what's what's next for you? Next for me is Collateral from 2004, starring uh, Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise, directed by Michael Mann. I mean, if I do think that Heat is also a fantastic movie, and Heat is one of my favorite films, but Collateral is one of my favorite movies because I think it is just yeah. so incredibly thrilling and it's so well done. The acting is great. I mean, typically, I don't know if Jamie Foxx is the best actor, but I think that he does yeah. a great job in this role. Have you seen Collateral? I've never seen it, no. I've oh, I would it. highly recommend you see Collateral. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I know... once again, just like an Jamie action Fox thriller. Is, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Got you. Okay. I was going to say, Jamie Foxx as an actor is always kind of like... right. It, it just it depends sometimes because I think he's really good in Charles or is it Ray or Charles? I think it's Ray. But yeah, he's really Ray, good in that. Yeah. The Jamie Foxx show that he had was really good. So yeah, it's just kind of like, I think it just depends on like, the he's just, sometimes he's just taking, he was good in Dreamgirls or in Ali um, and Django, obviously. Sure. So yeah. it just depends on the role he's taking. So yeah. 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 Um, and then Tom Cruise. I mean, can't go wrong with Tom Cruise. Yeah, it's true. Well, can you go wrong with Tom Cruise sometimes? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think so. I mean, his movies I mean, aren't necessarily the best, but they're always exciting. They're always enjoyable. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I can I can agree with that. Yeah. I mean, even what, going what back would you to say like is the, Risky Business or like uh, Rain Man, I mean, they're still enjoyable films. That's true. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I was going to ask what the last good, like genuinely good, but then like I remember, I haven't seen it yet, but everybody was saying Top Gun Maverick was like, super dope that is and the I, next I movie on my it. list is top gun maverick but we'll get to that oh wow okay okay yeah <laughs> you, go ahead. you go ahead what's what's your next movie for me baby driver dude baby driver oh i think yeah oh. i think baby driver is the movie that solidified that i want to like make movies or like be in like film or tv like any app because i was like if somebody can like get to do this I want to do this too. Cause that like baby driver is amazing. I like, I camera work. The, like if like you've seen some of my YouTube videos, like how he incorporates music music is such a big thing for me. And I like incorporating it to my work and seeing how Edgar Wright, like just made music, just this integral part of this movie, like that you have to like, just listen to It's It's like, I was like, wow, this is like something. This is almost exactly the type of movie that I want to not like babe, not exactly, but like, the same kind of ideas that he has that he's using, I want to make something like this. And it was just so cool to see. It. And Ansel Elgort does a good job. Lily uh, James, I think it I it, hate it does the a good ending job. to Baby Driver. You do. It's what is, so what's the stupid. It's like, this would never he, happen. No oh, she gets person. him out of jail? 
yeah, it's like no sensible person would like ever like agree to go through this in the first place. And then like everything that happens afterwards, you're like, this would never happen. I've seen different theories that that's like a dream sequence or whatever. But like, I think either way, I like it. I like a happy ending. They're together and they're like just chilling and like in love and all that stuff. And it's it's just not, it doesn't make sense, but it's nice. <laughs> I prefer my movies yeah. to make sense, but that's... Yeah, 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 obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, what do you, yeah. How do you think I, Jamie Foxx does in uh, Baby Driver? Oh, I think he does good in it. This is one of his best roles, probably. I think I think Ray is still probably his best work from what I've seen, mm-hmm. but I think he does a really good job in this. I, I I like his character a lot. He's intimidating. He's, like, crazy. Kevin Spacey also did, does a good job in this. Uh, it's a shame he's a weirdo because he has so many <laughs> good movies. But, um, yeah, like, I, I love this movie, man. It's It's, like... It inspires me so much. It's just, it's just beautiful. Yeah, I don't know how to say it. I love this movie. Okay. Also, another good heist movie. It's, well, I guess it's like half a heist movie, but it's still like a kind of good heist movie. You know? I mean, so, yeah. is it a good heist movie? I mean, is Drive a heist movie? <laughs> He's just like me, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I guess I wouldn't call Drive a heist movie. So I guess, I guess I, I can see that point. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I understand what you're. Yeah, talk from. about all of Ryan Gosling's movies. Yeah, we'll do an entire episode on Ryan Gosling and how he's just, yeah. like me. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> That'll be after yeah. we go see Barbie. All right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, um, but Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick, tell, tell 2022, starring Tom Cruise, directed by Joseph Kaczynski. Fantastic! Yeah. It is so close to a perfect movie. It you leave the theater yeah. feeling so good and like i obviously the big statistic is i can't remember exactly what portion of the movie but it's like the last 20 to 30 minutes of the movie influences the score of the film overall um more than any other part of the movie and i i definitely think that top gun maverick leans into that um because like it is just such like so much like feel good i don't know if that makes any sense um yeah, I get it. It's kind of like what I'm saying about Baby Driver. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, totally. Um, it makes you feel so good, um, about like life in general, and it's it's so thrilling. The 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 amount of work they put in to actually capture those scenes in the fighter jets, the amount of things that they built. I really like um understanding like all of the production methods that went into making something, and so the the special camera rigs they had to make the special like planes they had to rent and like retrofit in order to film these things is just so much work and care went into making something that they could have done on the green screen but on the green screen it would have nowhere close to the same effect and so that's just something that i really enjoyed about that film i remember Everyone's talking about how this movie saved film. <laughs> and, it brought you know, people back to theaters. Uh, it did. Yeah, it, I'm looking. It made like $1.496 billion. So I guess it did bring people back to the theaters. Because <laughs> yeah, everything else but, is, yeah, uh, I, this was, I believe, one of the first that didn't release simultaneously on streaming. And it proved that like people yes, still want to see movies in theaters. Yeah, absolutely. This movie only had like... It says this one hundred and seventy-seven million dollar budget, which sounds like crazy to me for a movie like this. Yeah. But I mean, I guess that's still a lot. But like seeing like with Marvel movies, they'll have like three hundred million dollars sure. and still be like complete ass. <laughs> it just <laughs> seems crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I, I know I gotta check it out. Everyone's saying this movie is like crazy good. I know I gotta see it. I just still I don't know how to. Is it? It's isn't on it only Plus. on Paramount? <laughs> What am I going to do Paramount Plus? <laughs> Literally nothing except for watch Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. I, I have Paramount it. Plus because I watched the Bills game, but. Got uh, you. Okay, okay. I think that's the sense. only justifiable reason is if any of your sports teams are covered by CBS, it's the only reason to get Paramount Plus. Yeah, because like, why, why does Paramount, I guess also if you want to watch Spongebob. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. But um, for me, my next movie is it's actually a Ryan Gosling movie, The oh. Nice Guys. Oh, yes. of course. I Nice Guys for me is like seminal buddy cop movie film. 
I love this movie. It's like everything I think a buddy cop movie should be. Ryan Gosling, he's just like me. Mm-hmm. Russell Crowe, he's not just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Crowe is a crazy dude. But like this movie is awesome, man. Like it's just like kind of reti- it's just a good time. Like like the story is cool, it's interesting. I feel like the one thing from my list so far is I like movies that are very like cool. Like they like they just have like a style and or a way about them that just like carries throughout the film. And this movie does that. Like I'm trying to remember who directed it, but this movie, like everything is I just love the story. I love the seventies setting. I wish they would have made a sequel to it because it's just it's just so good, man. It, it, right. I just love it, man. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I totally understand what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, it takes like for me it takes all the best parts of like the buddy cop movies from like the eighties and nineties and it just like puts it just puts them together, you know, and it just turns out really well. Like what was the Eddie Murphy Nick Nolte movie? Forty eight hours. That's another buddy cop movie that I love. Sure. And this movie just like it just does that, but like somehow like still really good, you know. So yeah. Right. No, I totally nice get that. Guys. We could also dedicate an entire episode just to Russell Crowe. <laughs> the rise and fall. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of rising again, isn't he? Isn't yes, he doing he is. like more stuff I mean, now? Yeah. yeah so up. he's kind of, he's, he's back. <laughs> I would get him confused with um Mel Gibson because Mel Gibson's the crazy one. Well, they're both crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So what, what's next? What's next for you? Uh, next for me is, um, I don't know which one. Do I, I don't want to end on. I think I put all the best ones for it. I'm going to say next for me is probably my favorite Christmas movie. And that is Jingle All the Way. Okay. Jingle All the Way. Um, which? 1996, directed by Brian Levant, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger? Um, yes. Turbo Man? Okay, Turbo okay, Man, okay. yeah. Turbo <laughs> Man. Yeah. It's a fantastic <laughs> movie. It's so funny. Arnold... I, the thing about Arnold is Arnold has incredible range. He can be the Terminator, yeah. and he can also be uh, yeah. Howard Langston in uh, uh, Jingle All the Way. It's two completely different people. Yeah. One has no emotion, super serious, and one's just like uber goofy, and he kills it every time. Like I feel like. He's the seminal action star, not even action star, but like movie kind of star from the 90s as opposed to like Sylvester Stallone or oh, like um, sure. whoever else was like, I'm trying for, drawing a blank on their name. But like, I feel like just his ability to do funny stuff like twins mm-hmm. and then do that, whatever that one James Cameron movie was like, <laughs> I just oh, like oh, that. Um, it's like True Lies. Yeah, True Lies. Yeah. True Lies also like, great. Honorable Curtis. mention. Yeah, yeah, but just his ability to just do that. I think that's what I like so much about Batista, too, because Batista, he'll just do everything, and he'll be, like, he'll do, like, I don't think he's at the level of, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's not good at anything, but he'll do anything. (laughs) I think Batista's good. I think he's been good in a few things. I liked uh, My Spy, which is a little kid's movie he did a while ago. So, I, I, yeah, Batista, he doesn't have the range, but he'll do it. I think Batista is very good in one very specific facet, and that is um, Drax. I think James Gunn just knows how to write for Batista, but I think Batista is upset okay. that like people are like, oh, he's Drax. And he's like, no, I'm more than that. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. is he really? I mean, he was good in Glass Onion. He was really good in Glass Onion, I feel like. He didn't really have a huge part in Glass Onion. But he was still good for when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm thinking when you put him as a if you put him as a star, I think he only works in a very select amount of ways. I mean, yeah, he was yeah. great in Blade Runner uh, 2049 or whatever it is uh, for the 10 minutes he's in the movie. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do have a question. What did you think about Sinbad? <laughs> Jiggle all the way. Uh, Sinbad's fantastic. When he blows up the building, hilarious. Yeah, dude. Sinbad's awesome. <laughs> we need more Sinbad films. For sure. Do you remember when people were like saying Sinbad was dead? <laughs> I do not remember that. There was like, I, I don't remember who it was, but there was some period of time where 
people were saying Sinbad died, and he was like, no, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, honorable, another honorable mention, Sinbad was in Good Burger, and Good Burger is legendary. Oh, of we course. Never, dude, yes. <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger. <laughs> Good Burger is fantastic. Oh. Dude, that's like legendary kids movie. Like I, oh, I love yeah. that movie. That's yeah. awesome. That and yeah. Like Mike, crazy good kids movies. But, I don't know if I know what Like okay. Mike. Am is. I next? Well, you can see. Okay, so Like Mike is the movie where Bow Wow gets Michael Jordan's old basketball shoes, and then he becomes really good and plays in the NBA. Oh, okay. You gotta watch it. It's like it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love. Okay. I love that movie, man. Okay. All right. But yeah, you're next. You're for next. me, the next one. Yeah. So. This is probably, in my opinion, the greatest action martial arts movie ever made. And I, I don't feel like that's controversial, but The Raid Redemption. The oh, Raid Redemption yeah. is like kind of like how when I was a kid and I saw Kung Fu Hustle and I was like, I've never seen anything like this. I saw The Raid Redemption and I was like, oh, this is this is crazy. This is this is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. It, it feels so real. It, Iko Uyas, I think is I think how you say his name. Mm-hmm. He is messing dudes up oh, and i sure. love it for sure oh my god the the fight the the hallway scene where he like slams that guy's head into like the wall three times is burned into my brain <laughs> like anytime i'm imagining a fight scene in my mind for like a movie or whatever i'm always like i have to recreate that i have to like like <laughs> slam a guy's head into a wall exactly three times um, oh, dude have you seen the trailer for the new expendables film I <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but I he's, he's in he's in the new Expendables film. It looks like him and Jason Statham are gonna have a standoff, and I am super excited. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be good. I just wish the Expendables wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. But, but yeah, dude, I I wish Eco Uwise was in better stuff because he's so good. Like they just cast him as like the action dude, but like he's so good, he should be in more than expend four bulls <laughs> right, right. oh my god but yeah uh he's if you have equally the raid 2 would also be i feel like the raid 2 ups the ante but the story suffers because they try to do like a bigger scale thing right which is unfortunate but it's still good it's just super long the same thing with the night comes for us which is directed by a timo taiwanto which is another like it pretty much has the same cast from the raid but yeah dude the Raid Redemption. Like, I can't... There's no... Like, I feel like the only thing that comes close to it is the John Wick movies. But even then, The Raid Redemption is just, like, a step above. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, yeah. yeah, no, no, totally. Um, yeah, John Wick, honorable mention. Yeah. Just um, all of them, or just, like, the first one? One, two, and four. Which I know you is know, like, three? controversial. I, love, I, love three. I know people think that three is, like, the best... Or they think it goes one, three. I I haven't seen it ranked with four, but um, before four Mm -hmm. came out, I know the like the popular ranking was one, three, two. I just think two is better than three. I mean, three is when they introduce the characters, like, oh yeah, these guys can't die, and they're like, well, that's no fun. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see that. They're literally invincible. They cannot be hurt. They cannot be hurt by bullets, and you're like, oh, I don't care. That's two. Commons in two. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, there's three with Halle Berry? Yeah. Okay, then yeah, two is definitely my favorite one. <laughs> Which everyone comments in. Yeah, it's yeah, that yeah that's two. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a great one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like that a lot. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Disappointing. Yeah. I I heard the Donnie Yin fight was good, but not like in four? great. Which, yeah. Uh, Yeah. I don't know why um, American movies decide to cast Donnie Yen as a blind man, but good for him. Yeah, but <laughs> good for Donnie Yen, man. <laughs> Have you... Okay, what is what is your next yeah. movie? I guess um, your is this your last one? This is the last one. Uh, I'm gonna say. Okay, okay. This is a tough one. I gotta. I, I really gotta pick because, like, I've. Through discussion with you, I realized there are so many more that I should have picked, but. My last one, and I'm going to stick with my original yeah, list, yeah, yeah. is RRR, which is a Tollywood film from 2022, directed by S.S. Rajamuli. Um, it's incredible. It's on yes, Netflix. I have heard seen about it. that movie so many times. 
Yes, I highly recommend everyone now. see it. I mean, it's Tollywood, and so you know it's going to be something for everyone. There's music, there's dancing, there's action, there's yeah. drama, there's uh, okay, a romance. Dope, dope, it's dope. it's a the whole reason it's fantastic is because it hits every single one of those like points perfectly. I mean, Bollywood itself has yeah. had an incredible track record of hitting all those points. Um, but I think this one is fantastic. It's about yeah, yeah, just sure. two dudes just hanging out and just doing stuff together. <laughs> and it's 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 fun. Okay, okay, okay. I remember, did it win like an Oscar or something? I remember it won some big award, I feel like. Or yeah, was I believe it was for... Um, oh gosh, I can't remember what it won, but it did win something. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was... Oh, yeah. I, I I've highly recommend it. I'd highly recommend watching like any Bollywood film yeah. just because it yeah. is so different than any American film. Um, one of yeah. my other favorite Bollywoods, and I, obviously RRR is Tollywood, which is different. It's still filmed in India, but in produced yeah. in a different language, um, which is the main distinction okay. between okay. the two. Um, but my favorite yeah. Bollywood film is probably um, Om Shanti Om, which is also a fantastic film. Um, it's got Saru Khan, who yes. is probably the greatest star on the planet. But yeah, uh, truly, if you are to see a Bollywood I... film or a Tollywood film, I'd recommend RRR to start with. Yeah, I don't know much about Bollywood. I feel like that's like kind of one of the biggest like genres of film that I've never really like explored because like I just don't. I just don't know like what's. I guess I could probably just Google it, but I just don't know what's good. And I guess I'll just check out, well, Tollywood for RR. And I was looking at one best original song at the Academy Awards. Gotcha. So. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I always have associated like, Bollywood like being super musical, super like kind of like dramatic in that kind of way. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I'll um, have to check do you out. want me to get into why that ha is the case or we can do that later? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You can. Yeah. Okay, I'd so um, the real reason that is is because um, India, as just the subcontinent itself, um, has just uh, incredible amounts of poverty, which is extremely unfortunate. Um, but the way that these films were originally made is they realized that they can't produce just an action film or just a musical because like, people don't have access to go to theaters. And so what they would do is they would produce a film that had everything in it. And so... Anyone gotcha. who wanted to watch gotcha. this film, they knew that there'd be something in there for them. And because they didn't have theaters, okay. they would end up, like, projecting them onto, like, tapestries or, like, watching them on really, like, terrible TVs. And so um, Bollywood yeah. also has the um, trope of having extremely bright colors because they knew that no matter what surface you were watching it on, at least some of those colors would be through or would show through. And so um, Bollywood films are always extremely long always have music, always have dancing, always have action. They have everything in them, and they're extremely bright, extremely colorful. Um, and that's just really why it came to be. Okay, that's cool. That kind of makes me think of, like, Nollywood, which is kind of like kind of like the Nigerian sure, yeah. like version of that in a way, where it just, like, it kind of has, like, a mix of, like, the super dramatic and the super action-oriented just because, like, sure. you know, obviously there's, like, poverty there so like you can't yeah. like just keep going to see these various movies so like that's yeah. kind of what i think yeah. about yeah that's, that's exactly what check it out. do you have a favorite nollywood film yeah i don't know like <laughs> i haven't seen a lot I think there's that one. yeah there's not a lot honestly but yeah i think yeah i haven't seen too many but when i no go ahead go ahead no i was gonna say there's this one that the one with the little kid from all the memes i watched that one super funny <laughs> okay. okay um i've only seen like two or three but out of um all of them i think the one i've enjoyed the most was the idol um which okay. is it's not as much action but it is um very like like sci-fi and that type of stuff uh, sci-fi and dramatic and it, it's, it's Got good you. yeah i anyway. guess there's a no there's a nollywood section on netflix if anybody wants if you ever want to i guess just look i suppose Okay, sure. But yeah, for me, yeah, my final last movie, one. like, this is obvious, but because you know me, but Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is, okay. like, I gotta put Across the Spider-Verse somewhere now that I'm thinking about it, but <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse is easily my favorite movie ever made. 
Um, okay, and you said that Logan think... was the best superhero movie. Do you regret that with Into the Spider Verse or no? Um, I would. Yeah, I guess I probably should have rephrased. I think like I should phrase that as like I feel like the second best superhero movie, or at least just one of the best in general. But okay. like, yeah, it's, it's Into the Spider Verse is like, I I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm seeing myself when I watch Into the Spider Verse. Like this sure. like just person who's like this like specific specifically this black kid who's just kind of like having to face the world when like sometimes the world can seem so uninviting and i think the story just it just feels so like empowering and special and like I, we kind of talked about this when we talked about across the spider verse like i do think across the spider verse is better but this movie like it like this move into the spider verse it just speaks to me in a way that that movie no, it doesn't you know i oh, think yeah, maybe I it's because that. like yeah it's just like a different type of thing now it's like it's bigger because when this movie first came out like nobody's really talking about it like it was just like, oh there's the animated spider movie now like i feel like it wasn't until like a few months later when everybody was like oh that movie's like really good but, like it's like this is like my favorite spider-man movie ever like i think it's better than spider-man 2 i think it's better than all the tom holland ones and um yeah this movie just like everything about it just like it just like it makes me feel like I'm Spider-Man, you know? And I feel like that's the conceit of the movie. Like, anybody can be Spider-Man, you know? And I think I think they do further that message in them across the Spider-Verse, especially with Gwen's story and how, like, kind of just the allegories to being trans and coming out and stuff like that. Like, But I really just think, like, you know, regardless of who you are and you're watching each of the Spider-Verse, you can see yourself and you can see, like, yourself fighting against the pressures that the world can put on you to be something specific when you want to be more than that. And... This movie just like whether i'm sad whether i'm happy whether i'm angry i watch this movie and i just feel better like, it just I, like, I just feel better shameek moore does a fantastic job playing miles like he deserves all the props in the world he basically has informed who miles will be until something better comes out and i don't think we will see something better but you're saying spider-man 2 for the ps5 is it gonna be better <laughs> uh listen well his miles is basically just into the spider verse miles but lame <laughs> so like you know listen i'm sure miles and spider-man 2 will be fine but it won't be shameek more <laughs> yes. so, no, no yeah. i agree i agree but yeah that's I, like i could talk about this movie for forever it's just everything i love about it everything i notice in it like i've seen it I've seen this, this is probably the movie I've watched the most in my entire life. Like, I've watched it, I, I want to say upward of, like, 20 times, probably. So. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Well, are there any more uh, honorable mentions we want to throw out there, or do you think that's a good place to end it for today? Honor- honorable mentions? I'd probably say, um, Parasite. Sure. Clue. The good original fellas, Clue? And, um, yeah. Okay. There's a new one? I mean, they make Clue all the time. Oh, I did I I didn't know. I just I was just thinking about the movie with um uh Tim Curry. So it's yeah, that's yeah. the original than that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um Confess Fletch with John Hamm was a movie I watched recently that I think is amazing. So yeah, just this probably. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um You got any honorable mentions? I'm trying to think. I think I've kind of thrown out all my honorable mentions while we were filming, um, or while we Got were rolling. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, John Wick, obviously fantastic. I love those. Um, yeah. I I do like a lot of action films. I think It Man is a fantastic series. Um, uh, I definitely think it. I after that it kind of gets rough. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. When it comes to action, yes, it is good. Um, when it comes to action, I think Kung yeah. Fu Jungle is fantastic. It's another Donnie Yen film. Um, story is not great, okay. but uh, I mean, it's Donnie Yen. The action's always <laughs> great. Um, uh, Terminator. Yeah. Uh, I love the Terminator films. The okay. first and the second okay. one. Don't really like Genesis. I don't really yeah. like uh, whatever the most You don't like Judgment Day? <laughs> Terminator 2 is Judgment Day. It isn't? What's 3? Um... I don't remember. With the robot lady. <laughs> I do not remember. But yeah, either way, either way. Okay. 
Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, Rise of the Machines. Rise of the Machines. That's right. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff out there. I'm just trying to think. And like yeah. I said, you ask me tomorrow, and I'll probably have ten completely different top uh, favorite movies. So. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. So yeah, this is just our list of just movies we enjoy. It was good talking about. I feel like I'll talk about my favorite movies a lot, but <laughs> these are my favorite movies and like okay. our, um, yeah, our favorite movies. So yeah, if if we want to talk about favorite films later, then uh, this is to the audience. Let us know. Um, tell us in the uh, comments what are your favorite films. Do you, what would you agree? Say like, disagree? Yeah. What would I say is what? Yeah. For sure. What would you say is like your distinction between? I guess we can cut this out, but like, what would you say is your distinction between oh, let's like finish the episode then. movies and films? Yeah, okay. Let's see. All right, well, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, next week, Zack Snyder. Um, uh, follow us on Instagram <laughs> and Twitter at OTOTPod. And threads, I'm sorry, and threads. Goodbye. Bye. And, and threads. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>